Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be reading 1 Chronicles 10, Jeremiah 44, and Isaiah 51. Now let's pray before we get into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this day that we might spend with you and get to know you a little bit more. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you've poured out on us that we don't deserve, allowing us to be a part of your perfect purpose. Please guide us with your Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and our minds and then that you would have us to know in your word today. Please forgive us of our sins and lead us away from temptation, that we might be more like you and glorify you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, let's get started. First Chronicles 10 now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him. Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer was terrified it would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor, and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news among their idols and their people. They put his armor in the temple of their gods and hung up his head in the temple of Dagon. When all the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men went and took the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones under the great tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance, and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Jeremiah 44 This word came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews living in Lower Egypt, in Migdol, Tapanes, and Memphis, and in Upper Egypt. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You saw the great disaster I brought on Jerusalem and on all the towns of Judah. Today they lie deserted and in ruins because of the evil they have done. They aroused my anger by burning incense to and worshipping other gods that neither they nor you, nor your ancestors ever knew. Again and again I sent my servants, the prophets, who said, Do not do this detestable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or pay attention. They did not turn from their wickedness or stop burning incense to other gods. Therefore, my fierce anger was poured out. It raged against the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, and made them the desolate ruins they are today. Now this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Why bring such great disaster on yourselves by cutting off from Judah the men and women, the children and infants, and so leave yourselves without a remnant? Why arouse my anger with what your hands have made, burning incense to other gods in Egypt, where you have come to live? You will destroy yourselves and make yourselves a curse and an object of reproach among all the nations on earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness committed by your ancestors? and by the kings and queens of Judah, and the wickedness committed by you and your wives in the land of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? To this day they have not humbled themselves or shown reverence, nor have they followed my law and the decrees I set before you and your ancestors. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, I am determined to bring disaster on you and to destroy all Judah. I will take away the remnant of Judah, who were determined to go to Egypt to settle there. They will all perish in Egypt. They will fall by the sword or die from famine. From the least to the greatest, they will die by sword or famine. 
they will become a curse and an object of horror, a curse and an object of reproach. I will punish those who live in Egypt with the sword, famine, and plague, as I punish Jerusalem. None of the remnant of Judah who have gone to live in Egypt will escape or survive to return to the land of Judah, to which they long to return and live. None will return except a few fugitives. Then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense to other gods, along with all the women who were present, a large assembly, and all the people living in Lower and Upper Egypt, said to Jeremiah, We will not listen to the message you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord. We will certainly do everything we said we would. We will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and will pour out drink offerings to her, just as we and our ancestors, our kings and our officials did in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. At that time we had plenty of food, and were well off and suffered no harm. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have had nothing and have been perishing by sword and famine. The women added, When we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did not our husbands know that we were making cakes impressed with her image and pouring out drink offerings to her? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, both men and women, who were answering him, Did not the Lord remember and call to mind the incense burned in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem by you and your ancestors, your kings and your officials, and the people of the land? When the Lord could no longer endure your wicked actions and the detestable things you did, your land became a curse and a desolate waste without inhabitants, as it is today. Because you have burned incense and have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed him or followed his law or his decrees or his stipulations, this disaster has come upon you, as you now see. Then Jeremiah said to all the people, including the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah and Egypt. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You and your wives have done what you said you would do when you promised. We will certainly carry out the vows we made to burn incense and pour out drink offerings to the Queen of Heaven. Go ahead then, do what you promised. Keep your vows. But hear the word of the Lord, all you Jews living in Egypt. I swear by my great name, says the Lord, that no one from Judah living anywhere in Egypt will ever again invoke my name or swear as surely as the Sovereign Lord lives. For I am watching over them for harm, not for good. The Jews in Egypt will perish by sword and famine until they are all destroyed. Those who escape the sword and return to the land of Judah from Egypt will be very few. Then the whole remnant of Judah who came to live in Egypt will know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This will be the sign to you that I will punish you in this place, declares the Lord, so that you will know that my threats of harm against you will surely stand. This is what the Lord says, I am going to deliver Pharaoh Hopra, king of Egypt, into the hands of his enemies who want to kill him, just as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the enemy who wanted to kill him. Isaiah 51 Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut, and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion, and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. and My arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right, you people who have taken my instruction to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. 
for the moth will eat them up like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Awake, as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced that monster through? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea, so that the redeemed might cross over? Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you fear mere mortals, human beings who are but grass, that you forget the Lord your Maker, who stretches out the heavens and who lays the foundations of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor, who is bent on destruction? For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, You are my people. Awake, awake. Rise up, Jerusalem, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath, you who have drained to its dregs the goblet that makes people stagger. Among all the children she bore, there was none to guide her. Among all the children she reared, there was none to take her by the hand. These double calamities have come upon you. Who can comfort you? Ruin and destruction, famine and sword. Who can console you? Your children have fainted. They lie at every street corner, like antelope caught in a net. They are filled with the wrath of the Lord, with the rebuke of your God. Therefore, hear this, you afflicted one, made drunk, but not with wine. This is what your sovereign Lord says, your God, who defends his people. See, I have taken out of your hand the cup that made you stagger. From that cup, the goblet of my wrath, you will never drink again. I will put it into the hands of your tormentors, who said to you, Fall prostrate, that we may walk on you. And you made your back like the ground, like a street to be walked on. Thanks for joining and listening today. If you have any questions, leave them down here in the comments section, and I'll be making some videos where I go through some of those questions, show you some of the questions that I had, and maybe we can find some answers or even dive into it together. Thanks, guys. Hit the like and subscribe and come back for more. All right, guys, take it easy. Bye. God bless.